Mike. Hi, everybody. It's Carolyn, Bible Talk with Carolyn B. again. And, uh, I was having a pretty bad day because I don't really want to do this. And, like, God's like, um, I assigned this to you, and you must do this. And, you know, and at one point he told me he's not going to keep reminding me every week to do this. And I don't see where it's going because it doesn't, I don't talk well, and I, I don't know. But I'm just going to do it anyway because God has told me to, okay? So I'll just claim that I'm here to talk about anybody, promote anybody, say wrong things or good things about anybody. I'm just here. That's God says so. Now, I, I thought about something I wanted to talk about way last week. And it's in Proverbs 9.9. Now let me go to the air. Proverbs 9.9 9 says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a, just man, teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. That's what God's trying to do with me. Teach a wise girl. And, and instruct a wise girl, and she will increase in learning. Just because I don't see the point in this, or any good is doing anybody... Although, I feel good after I do it. It doesn't mean it's something God's going to make of anything. It means that I'm following God's direction. And, you know, that is real important to me. That I do what God tells me to do. I like it when I do something God tells me to do. Because it always ends up as a benefit to me. At, in the end. And so, giving instructions to a wise man is, okay, um, he'll be yet wiser and teach a just man and he will increase in learning. So that's what I'm trying to be, a wise man and a just man. Thank you, Father. So, I didn't continue on in Proverbs 9.9. 9. I went on to Proverbs 10. And now I want to talk about from Proverbs 10.3 to 10.29, but although... Not every verse is, is something I'm going to touch upon. But starting with Proverbs 10.3, it goes, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. That tells me that if I'm not going to become righteous in the eyesight of God, he, he, he's going to cast away my the substance of my soul. I told you guys last week that I read a verse last week about how God will take even that which you do have. You know, if you don't want to be bothered with him and this and that, he's going to take away what you do have. All the good, you know, God instills in us when we are born or when we are, you know, like, when he creates us, he instills in us a, a sense of a substance as, as a person, as a personality, as a unique what a preacher is. And so those are like given, God given traits and and, 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 as, and um or oh, whatever, uniqueness to us to people that, you know, is yours just for because he created you and you need something. So I thank God for that. And then the taking away of what that it will it real you know, you, you, you don't have but that when you're born and then you grow and you live and you learn other things and you grow and, and you gain other things, but then you turn your back on God and those things which you did have, just your personality. And that if, it, if people like it, you can take that away and make people not like it. You know what I'm saying? That innate things, things that you can, we, none of us can control. He's, that's what I think he's talking about. So I'm trying to do the right thing by God. And then because it says in Proverbs 10, 3, that he will not suffer my soul to famish, the right, the soul of the righteous to famish. I want to be righteous because I don't want my soul to curl, curl up and die, wither away and die. There's no nothing in that for me. There's no life there. There's no happiness. There's no beauty. There's no God in that. And that's like, thank you, God. The essence of what he's saying, there's no God in a soul that's not righteous. So praise the Lord. I know for one thing, and I know for sure, for sure, in my soul of souls, and in my spirit, 
that God is not having people in his kingdom who just only have that little sin or that little problem. God wants you to work on as long as you live, work on every single little problem. He doesn't, he's not going to accept you in his kingdom at the end of times when you face the judgment throne, having had been that sinner that you knew you were doing wrong. And you, I know, can understand that you may not be able to help that. And it's hard for you to stop doing something. But there is Jesus Christ and there is God who will help you if you only ask. So when you don't ask and when you don't try, that's a sign that you're enjoying that sin, that you want to be participate in that sin. And I'll tell you, that one sin can get you God at the judgment seat to say, I don't know you. Believe me, these are things God talks to me about. You can be a missionary over in Cal, cut a feet in the poor, the, the sick, the malnutrition. You can work your life through serving others. But if you know, and then think you're gonna get to the judgment seat, having had having sex with boys in the in in, in the seminary, and uh, you know, watching porn porn till to, to you died, and you know, if the rest of you, even though you're called yourself a Christian and you're serving the Lord, and you're doing things that God does not like, if God don't like it, He doesn't like. You know, you can't make force think God to like something or accept something. He doesn't like because that's him. It's got to be his way or the highway. Now, I know it seems like impossible, but that is the whole point of faith. To trust God, give it to God, and he can make your path straight. He's looking for people who want that. If you just simply want it, you're going, you're doing good. You're, you're, you're on the right path. But if you consistently having sex outside of marriage and molesting kids or Oh, the multitude of things people do. And you're a Christian and you're doing good things for others like God, what have you. It doesn't, it's going to negate those good things. Because God is not looking for everything that you do that he says. He wants everything of your thoughts to be correct also. It's one thing to wish, want to not do certain things, but it's another thing to try not to. And if you can't do it, he's there to help you. You call upon his name and he wants to help you. So I'm not going to stay long on stuff like that. Okay, and the next verse is Proverbs 10, 5. And that one says, He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. I don't know why I wrote that one down. I guess I do. I did write it down why I wrote it down. Because today is the harvest. These days are the harvest. Hey, everybody, wake up. The harvest is right, and the workers are few. That's written. Google it, please. We are, you got You got those guys out there and women out there who's teaching the word of God in the, in the churches, on TV, I mean, and Bible studies. But listen, if you're not correct in your righteousness, you're, it's going to be to no avail. You'll say, who is she to say that? She doesn't know anything. Man, God can talk to a baby and throw, put and plant wisdom in a baby's head. And a baby can tell us things that we don't know. I, I watch the kids in my church, the youngsters, the young, very young people, teenagers and children. And they have a sense of knowledge for this world. That I don't have. That I have because they give it to me. But when I listen to the way they say things and how they perceive things, they are totally different. They're different from me. And I don't, sometimes I can get a little, oh, look how dumb I am. But I don't let them know. But I appreciate that they are working out, you know, their salvation. And I, I marvel at how ingenious they are, how they figure how to, out how to make it through, uh, uh, you know, uh, obstacles in, in their lives. And they're remarkable. These kids are awesome. 
and they deserve my support. Sometimes I can't stand them because, you know, they sometimes they, they're a little too smart, much more smarter than me. Sure, you're smarter about worldly things, but there was a time when you couldn't have said that to me. But I'm smarter and wis I'm more I have more wisdom. I know that some of the things you're talking about right now, children, are either gonna set you back, drag you along, or you know, they you're going I, I know for a fact you're gonna have to work through those things. So out of wisdom and out of age, I can tell you that no, you don't know everything, but you're very, very smart. But you never are done listening. You're not a wise son. It, 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 it uh, proof and you know makes his, his parents proud. Just listen to your parents, even though you don't believe them or you don't think that will ever happen. You just hear it. Let it be known that they told you that. Okay, so I diverted off of um, who gather us in summer. Listen, we we're in a harvest. People, preachers, pastors, people, gather your people. Do not deceive them. With your the way you live, you're deceiving people when you're living one way, and then you're talking and you're speaking God's word, sweetheart. Everybody sees through everybody. Seems like this these days, and what you do in the dark comes to light because that's the God's way plan. I don't like that. It seems that I don't have privacy in my own home. Yet, a lot of times. The, 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 that fact would make me always think about why I need privacy, which I do, and I, everybody will always, but, you know, sometimes it's just some things I just want to hide, which, hey, maybe that's a good thing. I don't see it as good, but sometimes good things can come out of it. But I don't see it as good things, and I really would like a home on top of a hill, a mountain, uh, with many, many trees surrounding it, and nobody knows I'm back there, because honey, uh, living in the city, and amongst people, upstairs, downstairs, next door to you, and sharing the same wall, or floor, or ceiling, it's just the pit, okay, and so now I'm ready to move on in my life, and do, do, do something different. And guess what else? Uh, Proverbs 10, 5 says, He that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Okay, now you you know it's harvest time. You know it's harvest time if you're in the spirit. Your spirit, God tells our spirits some things in common. So if you're sleeping and you're not doing something that helps people to come to God or have a, a query for God or for what he's like, if you're not that's not working for you, you're not doing something right, and you're sleeping, you're sleeping on the job, wake up, smell the roses, these days are, our days are numbered, and so, you know, take, take in consideration that this is harvest time, and it's time for the reapers to reap, okay, Proverbs 10, 9 says, 10 and 9, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. What did I just say? Ain't nothing we do that we do in private that's not going to come to light. When you walking across that stage preaching, right in front of that pulpit preaching, and you have an issue in your life, it shows. I'm here to tell you, it's not a hidden thing, and it's nothing nobody's got to dig for. It's right out there in the open. Is going to be known through the spirit what you're going through, what you do in your private life, and what you think you're getting away with, you're not. Okay, so, and you're, it's not that you're getting away with something. It's that you're causing harm to those who may be more feeble in the mind, who might ex expect God to be in the Lord and still be able to sin. There you go. That's unacceptable. And I don't think you can go crawl in any hole and sin and nothing's, nobody's ever going to know about it. So this is the kind of righteousness God So just walk uprightly and, you know, as best you can. And because uh, he'll help you. Believe me, he'll, man, Jesus is going to help you. Even when it, it, it gets to look like it's nitpicking. He wants you to walk uprightly in the name of Jesus. All right, that's Proverbs 10, 9 and then 10, 10. 
He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. This is the kind of sneaky thing winking with the eye. Hey, I'm doing this in the back, uh, uh, in behind your back, and behind this audience back, and more people in the audience know it than than the ones that don't. And then uh, that's you know that's a prating fool. You know, you think what you're doing in your life is not showing, but it is. And to think it's not showing, that makes you a fool. To me, I mean, you sat there in the audience when somebody was preaching and you knew that this person was doing that or he was sleeping, the preacher was sleeping around with a um, homegirl and uh, he was a child molester or whatever. And then, uh, you know. So, uh, what makes you think you ain't getting away with that? Okay, and now we go on to Proverbs 10, 13. One of another one I found interesting. And it says, In the lips of him that have understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. The rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Do you know the rod is not just for children? Do you know that these grown folks out here, adults out here, who you try to talk to and get to try to get an understanding with to leave you alone, stop bothering you, leave you alone, and this you can say this all day to grown folks. I'm not kidding. Through the walls upstairs or downstairs, and you know that kind of thing. This is like uh, uh, exactly what God's talking about. I mean, I'm not alive. God didn't give me life for you to antagonize 24 hours a day. Every second of the hour. For what? For life? Is this, you know, is this what you're going to do? So the rod, sometimes you put you provoke people to fight you. Sometimes you provoke people to want to go upside your head. I mean, there's but so much patience a person can have in the whole wide world. But if you keep doing the same thing to them over and over, good luck with getting keep getting away with it. I mean, I don't know one single person. That's not going to take action in some way, form, or fashion to get you to leave them alone. It's just unfathomable. All It's not because of Christianity. It's not because of, you know, you're being patient and you want to serve the Lord. No, it's because you're a grown person and you ought to know better. If I got to pe treat people with respect, why don't you have to? You know, it... How, I mean, what is that that would cause somebody to nag and nag and nag in somebody's life? But every day, every day upon waking it until you go to bed, and then you wake again to, to the next thing. And I, although I, I'm having that trouble with, in the spirit right now, when I wake up with God, it's just like so refreshing that I know that one day I'm not going to wake up to that madness because God is always there when I wake up. So I know one day I'm not going to even deal with that issue. The point is, why do you have, I'm working with this issue in my life. Why do you have to do that? I have, to, and if you have any prayers for me or any advice, just come to me. Call me. Hey, message me. Carolyn B. Carolyn. Uh, let me see. Uh, who am I? I'm on Facebook. You'll find me, Carolyn Billiard. Find me and give me some advice on, you know, how to cope with people wrong folk that you just want to hurt, um, you know, that push you to that point, that persecute you, and know that, you know, you already don't like them, don't want them around, you know, whatever their problem is, it's their problem, I can't help them, if they don't come to me and say, well, I like what you got, or you're too noisy, or whatever, you know, don't bother me uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because what you're talking about ain't nothing. You know, you, you're not, you don't make sense. You don't have anything I want to talk about. And why do you need, you know, some people just want to, 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 to uh, impose on your, in your life. You know, they want the attention. They want to be known in your life. If you're all that, be known out there somewhere. Be known in your own life. Get, get your own world. Get your own thing. Do your, have your own spotlight. Do what you do. But you know, I, I don't, if somebody doesn't like you, they not gonna like you anymore if you impose yourself on them. I don't like it's just me and my person. I don't like some things, some people, and I don't want to be bothered with them. But when you try to make me be bothered with you because you want to be a sassy fast 
or, you know, I, I, I ain't got that to do. If you want to be like that, then the rod ought to be for the back of you. And I really believe that, you know, one day I'm going to squash them, crush somebody in the name of Jesus. And I really hate to be here saying that. But, you know, at, you know, at, at some point, you have to understand I'm only human, too. You know, and, and the things you're doing to me, you couldn't handle it. So, you know, the ride should be for the back of them. Who, 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 who's, who's, uh, what was it? Who, who's void of understanding? It's the bottom line. If, if it's in here in the Word of God, in Proverbs 10, 13, then, hey, who are you to, okay? If you, if you have to just children. You can tell children to stop doing this or that better than you can tell grown people. Some people just, they'll be on making you a less than because you're black, you know? And so, there's a problem. So, if you got prayers for me, pray them in the name of Jesus. Because it's going to come a day when I'm not going to, it's going to be the right time and the right, I'm going to hit up with look at me face to face with that. And it's going to say something really, really stupid. Have a dumb look. I'm not going to be in that, that way that day. And it's going to be over for them. I don't have any doubt. I know for sure, for sure, for sure. So, you know, I, I, I've gone a long time with not doing that. But I promise nothing. I There's no way I can promise you that I won't have the rot for the back of a prating fool that just nagging, nagging, nagging at me 24 hours a day. Moving on, I also like Proverbs 10, 15. Which says, a rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. You better believe it. Listen, uh, uh, Tony Evans was on TV talking about, yeah, it's one thing to have to put up with persecution when you're rich, but it's even worse when you're poor. He, you bet you sure. Listen, I've had to stay put in persecution and go through things all because I didn't have a way out. I didn't have no way, no way to be away from it. I lived there and that's all I could do was just live there because I didn't have any money to do anything other. But, you know, and I, he, it's all right, you know, but, you know, it's not as if I never had nothing where I know what it's like to be able to just walk away, drive away, move away, just go, you know, and I miss, I miss that. But I know that right now God's doing this for a purpose. He's making me stay put because God is teaching me that it's not my way. It's his way. Everything is God's way. God is teaching me that, you know, and there is a way out and there's not in the car and it's not in the boat. It's in prayer. And so I understand what exactly what my father's doing. I've never been this poverty stricken in my life. And it's unbelievable that I'm living in it and it doesn't bother me like it should. I don't understand that, but then you got God who's, you know, working his plan in my life. And so, God is like awesome, and, you know, if I, I don't know what I'm hearing on the road, but um, if I have to live in poverty for the rest of my life, and I see God for eternity, how horrible was that? Like, this life is not going to last forever, and... If I have to be in poverty, which I don't, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I know my father ain't leaving me hanging like this. I know better. <laughs> but if I did, that's all I'm trying to say is it, it, what all God have done for me so far in my life is sufficient. If he doesn't do one more thing for me, I'm still blessed. I've still been blessed. But I know this is just the beginning and it's not the end. And I'm not going to go through this forever. You know, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. But, you know, how many people can do, do do what I'm doing? How many people got the power, the strength, and the courage, and the, and the faith to live a awful way because they know that God is not permanent, that they that their God, my God is going to get me out of this mess, I promise you. And it's going to be more than I ever thought in a way I never thought of. And that's that. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not having no problem right now. But you know how the devil might come along, so y'all pray for me, because you know how he can get, he can, he can, he can, in the name of Jesus, God, please don't let him turn that around, because he's good at that one, turning something into not turning nothing into something. In Jesus' name, God, I'll fight that, I rebuke him right now, I declare him dead and buried, 
and under my feet, God, right now, in Jesus' name. And amen, and amen, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. So I felt that, you know. So, okay, here we go. Um, I'm almost done because my time is, like, getting short. Where was I? The 1015 thing. A rich man's wealth is a strong city. Right. So here you got me combating evil in the world, and I'm poor. Um, it's very hard to do that, knowing that you're stuck and you can't run and you ain't, you know, you don't have the resources of the whole world crowded in on you. But I can tell you they ain't done that already. And I look to God and um, the whole world ain't, ain't got a prayer in the name of Jesus. This is another thing God is doing with me. He's got me fighting for rights, justice, and peace. And with no money. And no no artillery. No 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 way to get an army. Be that's because I have a league of ten thousand angels in camp round about me. I already have an army. You can't see them. Even I can't see them. But even I can feel them. Even I know for sure, for sure, but for sure that they're there. And even I know from experience that when I felt cornered by evil spirits and evil people and evil surroundings and evil neighborhoods, God got, hey, he was there. I can tell you on positive that these things are true. That God, you know, Gideon, uh, I forgot how Gideon fought, oh, with 300 men? And then, um, uh, Samson with the jawbone of a donkey and uh, then David with a slingshot. Listen, Carolyn, Carolyn B got a league of 10,000 angels in campground about her, even with her big mouth. Because sometimes if, when I'm pressured and I can't go nowhere, I don't have nothing but my mouth to, to, to make me feel better, just ease the pain. I mean, it is painful to, uh, to have to deal with evil spirits all day, every 24 hours a day. So, yeah, God is allowing me to run my mouth. I ain't got nothing else, and you don't, and listen, what you gonna do about it? And, and you know, it, it, win, lose, or draw, I still said it, I still meant it, and you ain't up against just a, a feather or a, a, a stick or a stone, baby, you up against a whole person, you know, good luck, and on your part, and what you, whatever outcome is it, remember, you started it, you know what I'm saying, remember that this is your baby, my, my, I'm a different baby, I, I walk in faith. I don't bother people. I don't want to bother people. I don't find it necessary. I don't, it's not health, healthy. And I'm not interested in destroying life, people's lives. You know, so don't think that I'm, it's, it's just because I'm not interested. It's because there's no avail. It, there's, what's the point? Because you can destroy other people's lives. Good. And guess what? Your husband going to be destroyed somehow, some way. God is not, will not be mocked. He said, uh, do unto others as you expect them to do unto you. And, and you know what you reap yourself. God will not be mocked. He's not playing with you. But people have a tendency to, um, like, uh, 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 take God for granted or don't, not believe him because he takes so long to do anything. God, you know, I know you take forever. A long time, Father, but it's all for a good purpose. And this is for sure I know. Because he's taking his time in my life. But look at what I'm learning all along the way. Oh my God, this is too valuable. Things too wonderful for me to, to know otherwise. You know, so, you know, sometimes we have to take the good, the good and the bad with a grain of salt or a lump of sugar because all things will come together for good to those, for those who love Christ Jesus. And that's for sure. This I know, this I know, this I know. This this is what I'm talking to you of, is faith. This is what faith is about. You know, you, you don't need to... But good luck, and I, I praise God that people have it to the point where, you know, you got to look, you feel a little bit more protected when you got to look. You know, something, something. But I will never trade. I Even if I become richer than richer than rich, I never want to trade God's protection for any, any amount of money, any anybody, God, any, I'll tell you what, God, y'all, I'm so free that I trust God only. I, I'm so free, and you, you, you may never know that feeling, but it's more freeing than worrying about what bodyguards doing and if they're there, 
we just want to sit that day and how one can't cover you and your 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 people God you say, well, we can't get nobody to do this today and I don't want nobody really um following me around to no shopping and to the restaurants. I really don't want that lifestyle. I really don't. So I'm good. Well, I, I need wealth and I need abundance, but I don't need that. You know, so I don't know how that will work out in my life. So I don't care either because I ain't, I ain't, I don't have to worry about it right now. <laughs> right. Write that down. All right, let's go on to uh, Proverbs ten sixteen. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, but fruit of the wicked to sin. Isn't that true? Righteous people want life. They want happiness for people. They want good things. They want to see a better world. They want to see more love. They want to see uh, justice. They want to see black. They black lives matter to people. But then there's those who, all they ever want is sin. I have to, you know, I just had to, I think just today, I had to go ahead and accept the fact that some people just want to sin. They want to be evil. They want to do wrong things to people. And there's just no way of, you know, helping them. This, I think that it may made them to be like that, and that's what they're going to be, and so they are, you know, and, you know, God, I love you so much, and so sorry for them, I'm so glad I'm not like that, I am so glad that I'm going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ when all this is said and done, and I am very sorry for those who's not going to be, God forbid that you don't make it, but then again, you know, I, like the other people that you have tried to destroy, feel that, hey, that you get, that, that'll be your just dessert. And who am I to say I know that I shouldn't judge because who am I you know, to judge? But I will be glad when Jesus does, Christ does either or with my enemies. I have had uh, about enough of my enemies of no for no good reason, you know. If I did something to you, then you ought to come to me and let me know. Let me, you know, uh, 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 school me, you know. Uh, there's nothing I can do about something that's in your crawl if you don't tell me about it. You know, I, I, and, and then, you know, when you start bugging me and persecuting me and, and threatening me, I really don't care. And I'm not, listen, that's the personality that God is working with. Because at the end of the day, I don't care. You know, uh, hold on, and let's not, you know, do too much more than we are, uh, you know, than our boundaries allow us. You know, back off, and, you know, I don't care. You know, and make, and if that's wrong to you, make me care. You know, if it's wrong to you and you write about that, come step in my face and make me care. Because I'm not feeling you. And, um, you know, who really wants to fight? But I'll tell you what. If the mood, if the mood is there, good, you know, and you in my face with it, good luck. I mean, you know, I'm only human. It's childish. You think it's childish to fight? I think it's childish to pick on people all day long and, and do things to people all day long that you know are, is not right. Now, that's childish. Then you got people calling people around the neighborhood to get back at me when the whole thing was your... You started it. If that's not childish, and the biggest fool is the one that came to help you when you were wrong. Oh, that that I hadn't done anything to at all. You know, there's the biggest fool. So I don't know. You know what I feel? I feel like God's trying to tell me something about helping these people. Lord have mercy. When wonders ever cease, do, when you ever stop giving me things to do that I hate, please forgive me, God, for I know not what I'm saying. Oh, you know what? I, 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 every time I feel this way, they end up being the same people in the next 10 seconds. But may God be with them. May God be with me, because he is already with me. And I uh, don't be jealous, because God's with me. His power is in my arms and in my body, and his strength is also in my spirit. What can you do? You know, sometimes 
you can't fight against God. Sometimes it's you know you 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 have to accept the way things are because you're not God. You you can't change anything, and why worry yourself changing something you can't change? Still, I don't get people, you know. You worry yourself over nothing for nothing for, and the outcome is nothing. Oh my God, I think it's the crack smoke, and I'll tell you. That crack got some wicked, some minds changed over to wicked, a kind of wicked I never dreamed of. I never thought I'd see it. From a child on up, I never, oh Lord, man, crack cocaine. Yeah, that people doing some crazy stuff. Hey, doing the same thing of pulling on the blinds or, or messing with people the same way at the same time every day, the same, doing the same thing. That's that crack. So, you know, you live in, in a, you're, you're thinking out of a mind that's distorted on drugs. And then you expect the whole world to understand that. I don't understand nothing. I understand one thing. You're on crack. I understand one another thing. I tell you, you're on crack. That's your... You know, the crack is trying to get you killed. Uh, you remember that saying in NA and AA, jails, institutions, and death. But uh, you can't say that, but so many times to a person, until they over, they trump your, your wisdom and your, uh, your, your reasoning with some more garbage. So, <laughs> golly, I am telling all my business, aren't I, about my, um, you know, my uh, surroundings, which I don't care, because maybe you guys will pray for me. Maybe you'll find in your soul and say that poor chick, dealing with all them crackheads all around her, because I'm living in a ghetto because I'm poor. Not the, not the black ghetto, the ghetto. A concentration of crackheads. Get, the term ghetto means a concentration of a certain type of people, and a concentration, and a concentration of them. And this ghetto is the crack ghetto. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, Proverbs 10, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuses reproof, that he that refuses reproof erreth. Let me put it plainly in layman's term. But he that refuses to be corrected is in error. He's erring. He, he, he's he, he's uh, making a mistake. How much more can you tell a person over and over that they're doing this wrong and they're doing that wrong? You know, this these are people who just do, are not going to do the right thing. So this is what I'm asking. I want y'all to pray for me to, that God lift me up and above and out of the area of my enemies. Because this is really beginning to bother. I mean, it can't bother me more than it has. But it's, it's beginning to wear, weary me. That's it. It's the same thing over and over. Every single day. And my God has promised to co correct the situation or, or fix it. I'm just waiting on him to do so. You guys pray for me. That he does just that. I, 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 enough is enough already. But enough was enough two or three years ago. So I've been saying that for two or three years. You know, but God does what he does. And I still love him because he is God, and he's so beautiful that you can't get mad at God because he loves you like nobody else does. When 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 the whole world's closing in on the whole neighborhood or whatever is closing in, I mean, God is there. God comforts me, and I know for sure, for sure, for sure, ain't nobody gonna be bothering me. And I can sleep at night. I, I'm not worried about life when I'm asleep. I know my Lord. It's not that I know it. It's because He's proved it. And, but I'll tell y'all what, God will prove that he is faithful if you have just a teeniest bit of faith. Try your best. Okay, focus on one little thing in your life that you really want changed. And make, keep on, keep on believing. No matter what, no matter what the, the another thing goes in your head and tells you, oh, that's not going to work or you prayed for that before, or, 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 or look, it's coming back. No, uh-uh. Stay steadfast on that. Focus steadfast. Keep the faith, because see, God is in that. God is in that little bit of faith. God is right in it. He's, he's, he's not uh, away from me. He's not removed from it. That is God. That little bit of faith is God. And I'll tell you, whatever your problem is, it's going to work out if you just hold fast to your faith. I know for sure. I know for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, I got to go.
It's 39 minutes already. Listen, uh, I have one more. Um, I had two. Okay, this is Proverbs 10 and 23, and it says, it is sport. Wait a minute, where was I? Okay, it is a sport for a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding has wisdom. Same thing I was talking about before. It is a sport for people to do mischief. Uh, for a fool. That's a, that person is a fool. You can't change a fool. A fool is going to be a fool. Listen, it's it's written. It's written in your proverb somewhere. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool to his folly. That means a dog licks his own vomit back up just like a fool. A fool in his garbage and messiness and foolishness. Hey, it's, back, it's the same thing. He licks it back up and starts it all over again. As a dog returns to a vomit, so a fool to his folly. Go ahead and Google that one. And so, you know, I thank God. You know what? Now I see the point. God is doing something in my life. The reason he got me doing this. Hallelujah. <sighs> I'm letting all this out. All this pain. All this anguish. All this anger. All this, you know, I'm astonished at the futility of the thinking in man. The foolishness and the back and forth to the same stupidity all the time. I'm astonished at it. I can't believe people want to live like this. And God, I'm in this surrounding, but I'm not of it. And I thank you for that. And if you guys are having trouble out there with people like this, uh, take heart. And, and I mean, be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome this world. Jesus has overcome the demons. Jesus has overcome Satan. Be of good cheer, because I have. He has overcome the world. It's written. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Google that. Jesus Christ has overcome this. Thank you, God. And they, you know, I, I always think of the preachers. I'm like, they really need to take their own advice here. God, thank you. Let me take my own advice. Ugh, I'm so grateful. Thank you, God. I mean, I, 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 Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus have overcome the world. Okay. Hey. Thank you, God. And I pray that God would have me take my own advice. Whatever he had me speaking, let, let me take my own advice. Thank you, God. God is so good. Listen. I'll say that then all the time. God is good all the time. God is good in a way that it can't be described. God is going to one day have me be able to describe this to a bunch of people, to a whole audience, and describe his goodness, for he is good. Right now, I can't. It, it, I'm still trying to live, live all the way in it. You know, I can't describe it right now, but I know it's a good feeling, and I want you guys to have that good feeling. I, I want you to come to Christ. And eventually, and feel this good feeling. Sometimes it's right away, and sometimes it's not. But once you give your life to Christ, listen, uh, God will is all is working. He's working. He's computing. You won't feel it. You don't know it. But the next thing you know, a miracle has happened in your life. Listen, say this one prayer with me right now. I've got one more scripture, but right now I want you to say this prayer and put God in your life for your for your troubles and for your for changes for the better. For your life. Here, listen to me, people. I need you to say a prayer that will ask God into your life. And it goes like this. Now, go ahead and pray right with me, y'all. Listen, listen, listen. Say this. God, thank you for sending Jesus to come to this earth to save us from our sins. Please save us, Lord God, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you felt something. Some of you did. If you didn't, still, it still works because heaven is happy over one angel that repents. I mean, one sinner that repents, the 99,000 righteous people who think they don't need Jesus. Listen, Google that. Just say heaven is happy over one sinner that repents. And Google that and see, won't you find that scripture? Okay, one more, one more, one more. Okay, here we go. That'll be uh, uh, Proverbs 10 and 23. Oh, that was it. Hey, uh, Proverbs 10 and 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, 
but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Thank you, God, that we pray that prayer right now, because the way of to, to you is our strength. And God, thank you. Wait a minute. Okay. It is our strength. God is my strength. I promise you. God is your strength. I promise you. And the way of the Lord is, is strength to the upright. It, God is strength on, on, on GP. But if you're trying to be upright, uh, man, you're talking about catapulted strength. And you're talking about, you know, like David's um, slingshot and you pull back and it catapults that rock to, into glory, into the, the, the into the, um, Giant's forehead. That that's the kind of strength God has for the upright. Now go ahead, try to live the right way. Pray when you can't, because God's gonna help you. And then may God be with you guys. And you know what? Uh, I don't have the rest of that. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You all know that doing wrong has never ever netted you anything but trouble and misfortune. You know the work in iniquity and sin is not going to benefit you at all, but as as a matter of fact, it's going to do you do you even worse. So, uh, listen, stop being working in iniquity. Change, turn your heart inside around, and nobody has to know that. God is, there, there are some private uh, points in life with God. If you, if you pray in the God and you ask God, could you make this private, Lord? He does just that. And, and, and you find yourself listening to see who's listening and then you got to say prayer again because you came out of the the, the, the the privacy. So yes, there's other things that go on. And one more thing, I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, there's a thing called separation of church and state. Uh, the church, the state's got nothing to do with the church's money, the church's taxes. There's no taxes. The government has nothing to do with that. Don't let, I mean, you got some bad accountants who's telling you that the church, uh, the government going to take this and want that. That's a bad accountant and he owns the side of the, 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 the enemy. So, you know, there's separation of church and state, separation of church money and state money. And that's the bottom line. Don't let people take your weakness when you, your thoughts that are weak and skeptic, skepticism that you have and use it against you. Because all they're trying to do is they're bluffing you to see what they can do. But I'm telling you, separation of church and state. They ain't got nothing to do with your money and the government, the state, or nothing. Uh, and they're trying you to see what they can take. Because if you go for it, they're going to take it. Watch yourself around these vipers. You, you can't live with the vipers and be helped from the vipers. You can't get with the vipers to help you against their viping time. Because they only in it for their viking kind. If you understand me, if you love yourself, if you love God, take your troubles to God. And, and like you should have done in the first place. In the name of Jesus, I love you and you stay safe. Stay safe from the coronavirus. Keep your mask on. I guess I'll see you soon. As soon as possible, people. And pray for Carolyn because she's having such a time of it. But thanks to God, thanks be to God that all will be well, especially if you pray. May God be with you. See you later. Bye now.